Winged Mills WM 2006. Suppose you want to pump water or air far from the grid. To use steady but light winds needs a large multi-blade wind pump and a crane to lift it 30 feet up. Consider instead our uni-blade wing pump of much lower weight. You solo can install it to pump much more in soft winds at half the cost. Our winged blade oscillates about a low pivot to sweep a large and high sector of wind without the cost and danger of the fan mill's tall tower. Its low bearings are much easier and safer to lubricate. Our wing's unique oscillation starts in two knots of wind, with the tail-heavy wing flipping from highest to lowest. But here the 15 knots of wind is damping the flip in half, safely limiting the wing's lift. Higher winds damp the flip and slow any oscillation to zero. Thus the wing is feathered and safe in this 40 knot storm. But to avoid too much drag in RPM, a fan mill needs extra mechanisms to yaw and break it sideways to a gale. A winged mill can be stopped at any time by just pulling the wire to the red lever to null the wing flip. Then this frame swings down to lock the pendulum for climbing to inspect and grease its bearings. Any overswing of the pendulum in the wind also tensions the wire to reduce the wing flip and so the next swing. Should the pump valves fail and our wing try to swing too far, the yellow latch catches and holds it safe. This signals for miles to fix the pump. Instead, a rotor just keeps on cranking a broken pump, fooling the farmer and wearing away. When a hurricane with its flying debris is forecast, remove some counterweight, disconnect the winch and overswing the pendulum to remove the wing easily by hand from ground level. The bare latch pendulum then serves as a gin pull for raising and lowering our low tower with only a hand cable puller. A rotor has a fixed crank and pump stroke, too long for too big a peak torque to start against in light winds, but once started by a strong enough wind, too short to capture the most of its power. Annually a fan mill can only usefully pump just one-tenth of the best wind work on a cubic and uniform rotary load. The oscillating uniblade is a much better match of the ever-varying wind to single acting pumps with fixed pressure loads. The pump stroke of our winch with its spiral coils very strongly with almost a cube of the swing, not loading a starting swing in only two knots but still absorbing all the wind power swept in a big swing and a good wind. Winged stands for wind wing winding. Comparing pump watts versus wind speed, the winged mills pump twice as much in light winds as the air motor multiblade to reduce the size and big extra cost of the sealed reservoir for potable water. Pumping air to high pressure stores energy much more cheaply though loses one quarter to heat and increases the peak torque block to a fan mill starting. A scrap motorcycle engine can smoothly compress to 130 psi when its chain is pulled by our winch, its clutch converted to a ratchet, and its connecting rod to push and pull the unsealed rods of tandem pistons in staged intercooled cylinders. An alternator can be directly mounted on the crankshaft open end to charge batteries doubling as counterweight. See the headlamp glow with every 12 volt charging pulse. For more voltage and side power, mount a ring gear on the winch shaft and its ratchet starter pinion on the alternator, again sensing RPM with a pickup coil to turn the field on. This add-on can be homemade for a fifth of the cost of a separate wind charger or solar panel. Solar electric pumping is far too expensive at $70 per pump watt for more than nominal duty, whilst the winged mills pump enough to be used for trickle or furrow irrigation of a small farm. Nothing solar, panels, submersible motors or rotary pumps can be made by artisans. But the winged mill is simple and cheap to produce. The wing's wood frame is a strong 40 pound truss of light and durable western red cedar. The woven polyethylene fabric is wrapped around it, stapled at the trailing edge, and heat shrunk. With a coat of aluminum paint rolled on, this very cheap cover will last about five years in the sun. The pendulum axle is a low-cost threaded pipe turning in used truck bearings. The counterweight can be concrete or a steel box filled with sand. 
The tail vanes which yaw the wing and pendulum into the wind are whole sheets of plywood or metal roofing. All our pumps combine the valve and seal so the piston can yaw easily with the wind. Let's look in detail at the different pumps and bases for ponds and wells that give the uniblade pendulum more versatility than the multi-blade rotor. Flow Pump FP Base On a small lake, the floating pump can be easily towed to the shore needing the water and anchored to yaw with the wind. If there is enough wind to ripple the water, the FP pumps, as its submerged cylinder never loses prime. Whereas a fan mill fixed on the shore needs more wind and much more pipe to irrigate the fields around the lake, and its suction pump can lose prime any time the wind lulls. Nor will floating it eliminate the yaw bearing still needed for its safe furling in storms. If our wing swings too far, its tip rod picks up water from the pond, reducing the wing tail heaviness, and so its future flips and swings. In this test, the water pump is just dropped back to the ocean. In freshwater service, the whole base would float around the blue PVC pipe above its three anchor ropes and its submerged output pipe to shore. Inside the lower half of the PVC, the drag of the heavy piston falling through the water sucks air into the top of this cylinder through the small white snifter valve. On the upstroke, this air and some water is pushed through the red flap valve in the divider. The upper PVC is sealed into a chamber to collect the air which cushions the output of the water through the big lower side port. When the water level drops the pink valve float, excess air is outlet through the garden hose, here as submerged bubbles. This air, up to one third of the total intake, helps to aerate and destratify the pond to improve its water quality. Cattle gain weight faster drinking water lifted from fenced aerated ponds rather than drinking down at stagnant ponds they can cave in, foul, and infect their hooves in. For injection in deep fish ponds, air from the winch compressor can be stored inside steel pressure cylinders doubling as the FP's flotation. Otherwise the pontoons can be styrofoam for moving the FP between small ponds or just raw logs for a bigger lake with a steady wind direction. For its cost, the flow pump of water out and air in is the simplest most powerful pond windmill ever. Flutter well FW and pipe pump for drilled wells. For potable water and in arid zones, the same WM wing and pendulum can be used to pump groundwater in light winds more economically than the multi-blade. The flutter well mounts directly on the steel well casing with a hinge joint for very easy raising and lowering. A surface slab with guys can be added to reinforce the casing and the joint. The coiling of the pump belt permits very long strokes through the yaw taper roller bearing, overcoming any stretch of the pump wire and reducing the diameter and cost of the drop pipe. Whereas a stroke cranked by a rotor must be much smaller to pass through its yaw hole and not to fall faster than gravity. Then transmitting it down the well needs rigid pump rods and drop pipe. For maintenance many hands are needed to lift and hold each very heavy series whilst carefully unscrewing each emerging length of rod and pipe. Whereas the hydraulic return of our pipe pumps is fast enough for the FW's large strokes or for treadling by one adult or two children. Just pull our continuous pump wire out past its normal stroke to release the water column and retrieve all the seals and valves. You could then hand pull the empty polyethylene drop pipe and its cylinder out to clean the inlet filter, but the hydraulic return has backwashed it every stroke and kept it clean. After changing worn seals, just lower the pipe plunger down the well to resume pumping instantly. The pump wire can run sideways from the windmill on high exposed ground to a lower well near buildings or trees. Or buoyant low stretch rope can run to an outside well from a treadle inside a cabin through the delivery pipe which would be buried below freezing level. The pulley in the T comes out for removing the plunger at the well head. And the cabin pulley cage is also force fit in its elbow. The pipe pump rests at the bottom of its normal stroke on a clean, wear-free static seal that can retain the water column for weeks between pumpings. Here the FW pumps the clean potable groundwater 20 feet high before draining it back to this low yield test well. 
The vinyl sheathed stainless pump wire slides through a standard bearing seal at the wellhead. This small compliant seal leaks less with less friction and expense than the multi-blade stuffing box and polished rigid pump rod. By adding snifter and check valves below a tubeless surge tank at the wellhead, the pipe pump automatically adds one quarter air to its stroke, outputting some air at the water pressure it stabilizes, here 40 psi. In summary, the pipe pump is the easiest deep well pump ever to install and maintain, especially for the flutter well. The winged mill water pumps also sniffed air for cushioning and output, charge up to 36 volts, and compress air to 130 psi, all in lighter winds at less cost than wind rotors. For more information, please visit econologica.com.